Now I tested the two power tubes earlier. They are fairly mismatched as you can see. So I spoke to the owner and he uh, agreed that I should replace the two power tubes. I'm now going to give all of these tube sockets a good clean, retention those little claws that grab onto each pin. I mean, just looking at them, they do have some corrosion in there. I'm going to give them a bit of a clean, put my anti-corrosion stuff in there, give them a bit of a rub with my rubbing tools, my little brushes, flush that out with um, isopropyl, and then we're going to start powering up. I sprayed into all of these tube bases this solvent which loosens rust and um, improves contact. So uh, I then go in with my little set of brushes and I clean each of the pins, big pins, big, um, big tubes, the octals, I use the brushes. For the smaller nine pin ones, I use this little one there. Gets rid of any corrosion. There was a little bit there. So that's why you see some of this dampness here. We're going to go in and, and clean all this up with some isopropyl alcohol later. Now that I've wired up the power supply correctly, safely, I've now got a spare switch just hanging here. So rather than it doing nothing, if you just leave the switch in one position, it'll be totally stock. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift this leg here, this lift wire. That's our negative feedback loop which comes back down through this 82 ohm resistor to where we had that poor connection before, if you recall. It was a dry joint. And I'm going to run that wire to one side of the switch. And the other side of the switch is going to go there, back to where it originally is, which is the uh, speaker socket. So when the switch is in one position, it'll be totally stock fender, negative feedback. When it's in the other position, I'm going to open that negative feedback loop. What that will do is it'll give the deluxe reverb a little bit more gain. It'll be a little bit hissy because that's part of what negative feedback does. It reduces hiss, reduces noise, keeps it cleaner throughout. So if that's what he wants with the deluxe reverb, he has it in the standard position. But if he wants the output a little bit, shall we say looser, a little bit grittier, a bit more driven, for example, he's known for using AC30s. This is not going to make this sound like an AC30, but an AC30 has no negative feedback either. So it's not going to be totally foreign for him. May not like it, leave it in a stock position. He might love it and switch between them. This is going to be a little bit awkward because the camera is right in front of my face. This switch has got three contacts. Always check to make sure you're switching the right contact. So that's the bottom contact that we're going to need to take a wire to. A wire to. So this is the wire that we took off from somewhere else and we kept. I could run some new Teflon covered wire or PVC covered covered wire. Um, I've got yellow. But you know what I'm going to do? I think I'm going to link these two together. Where I have that join, I'm just going to tuck under there and no one's going to see it. Well, that worked quite well. Got a nice long length of the exact original wire instead of binning it. Now I've put more of my um, add on flux pin on that connector. I'm using flux solder but I also like to add a little bit more sometimes. Via is to main solder, Tristan and is solder. No, I'm still not 100% happy with that solder joint. I think it just had a lot of gunge built on it over the years. That looks better. Here's good. Now this can tuck up under here. 
and we'll let it all reach just beautiful. Beautiful. Now you tuck in under there. And my little join can tuck in back there. And it goes from there. She's good. That little fuse holder. Oh, there it is. Has it got the right fuse in there? Two amp. That sounds too big. This is really, really wrong. In the USA, it should be a one amp slow blow fuse, which means in Australia, it should be half an amp because we've got twice the voltage for the same power. And this is two amp. Wrong. So I'm very happy with the way that's turned out. I've tilted this back so hopefully you can see it a bit better now. So I've taken the negative feedback connection that comes from the speaker jack because the negative feedback is where the signal going out of the amp from there is compared to what's going into the phase inverter by reducing a bit of the gain that we sacrifice a bit of gain. Uh, it's going to make it a quieter, cleaner sounding amp. But some of us like it just a little bit looser, a bit more touch responsive. You could say a little bit more voxy. No one would pick that. You can't see the join unless you look there. You can just see it there. Other than that, looks totally stock. That's the way we want. This front panel is looking just a little bit too sad. Plus. I think the knobs aren't placed properly. Um, some of them are like, like they're rubbing on there. So I might take these off, give them clean, not to look brand new. I don't want it to look brand new, but instead of 60 years old, if we can get it looking 40 years old, that'd be better. Clean it, give me a chance to clean up this plate as well. And I noticed that, so I'll, I'll just make sure all those pots are tight as well. That'll be my next little jobby. They turned out really well. Dishwashing liquid, toothbrush, and just some gentle rubbing. And just got to make sure there's no water in here. That's perfect. Well, I've got the knobs off. Let's just give the um, pots. Use this. Use tight. Tight. Tight now. Size, probably change at some stage. Tight. A bit loose. A bit loose. All right. Now that's nice and secure. While those knobs are off, I'm going to give this front panel a bit of a wipe down. One of my wonderful clients gave me this cleaning cloth. It's used in the medical industry to clean instrumentation there. And it's very gentle, but really effective. I like this a lot. And I really hope I've kept his phone number somewhere because it doesn't remove the lettering on the silver face amp side. It's just a magic product. I'm not sure if you can see the marks around the face plate here. And that's where if you jam the knob hard up against the control panel, against that black panel, It'll the back of the knob will rub against the panel, and it just doesn't feel good, you know. So if you just, I just use a fingernail width, just enough to clear that. And I'm lining all the uh, knobs up to the one of the ten, and that will make them all line up nicely. Now I use the more worn knobs. On the probably the less used controls like tremolo how good does that look 
a word about billing, how I invoice these. This sort of thing, he hasn't asked me to clean this amp. So I'm just doing this as a thank you. Now I've taken the input jacks out for a couple of reasons. Firstly, the grounding for this, it takes off that front face, which is in contact with that brass strip. So I'm going to buff that surface clean, make sure that's a good electrical contact with that there. So I'm going to clean that as well. Also going to clean the sleeve input there and the tip input there to make sure we have good electrical contact. And I think this is a good example. Yeah. So that grounding leaf there is not making contact with that hot there. And the reason that's important is when there's no lead plugged in there, that should short the ground out. Got to do two things. You've got to make sure that that contact is clean and that the tension is going to be. Yeah, you can see, I don't know if you can see, but when I pull that lead out, we should see that grounding leaf come into contact with it, but we're not. I'm pretty sure we're not. No. I botched up that demonstration. So anyway, I'm just going to do a little bit of a bending job to make sure that that is in good contact and that contact there is clean. And finally, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to have a go and see if I can clean up this gunge here. It's probably decades old. Could be like WD-40 that was applied in the golden years. So I'm going to try a couple of different solvents to see if I can clean that up. All right, I'll just let that sit there for a while, see if that does anything. Let's get our IPA and a bit of a cotton bud. Let's see what we can get out of here. Hmm, not too bad. This is probably the most used input jack. Socket one of the vibrato channel, and yippee, indeed, he you can see that. So, just doing this to your input jacks is going to improve the sound, no doubt about it. Just watch me, you don't have to read about it. See gunge. Yep. Now if you don't want to take your amp out, you can just you can clean that hot from going into your normal jack like that. You're not going to get quite as good a, a, a surface coverage, but pretty darn good. So every once in a while, every six months even, just get in there with a cotton bud and give it a bit of a swish around. But once got to get a bit of IPA here. Just going to open that up a bit. I've got this file, I think I got this from Stumac. Great. Well, well, well. Look at what I just found. You probably can't see it. I'm trying to get the camera in a good enough angle. But I was cleaning here and can you see that? That's a ground connection from the eyelet board. It's the same area where we found that dry joint on that 47 ohm resistor going to ground in the phase inverter. Another dry joint. I, I doubt if this amp would have worked or sounded totally shit. So I'm just heating up my big soldering iron and that's probably why we've got a bad joint here it's going to be a tough connection to get done because i don't want to burn the other wires and it's got a great big fat head on it but i have to apply lots of power to that to get a good solder joint there Get 
some of that oxidation off so I don't just repeat a shitty solder joint. Hide under there so you're safely away from my big soldering iron. You get there, using a bit of solder paste there, but it's not going to run away, I've got this at a bit of an angle, so you can see it and I can see it, Ooh, I reckon I'll just get that in there, that's better but I'm still not happy with it. Ain't going nowhere. Test these out while I'm here. Yep. I think all the original Fender ones from 60 years ago are nice and solid. I think someone fiddled with this one more recently, which is why that was a dry joint. We had a dry joint up here. But I'm pretty sure Leo would approve of that. Beautiful. So you actually, you can actually uncover more issues by giving your amp a good clean. Now I'm going to do exactly the same thing to the normal channel input jacks. And even though this channel may be, I don't know how he's using it, but most people don't use the normal channel that much. All the more reason why that earthing leaf be scrupulously clean because these two input jacks will make noise if they're not properly grounded when not in use. Okay, the input jacks have been serviced on the normal channel. It's about the best I can do chemically. So I'm just going to now get my little wire brush thing happening on my Dremel. Got my safety glasses on to catch the bits of bristle before they land in my eye. And here we go. And I'll also get around the... Also burnish around the input jack contact on the brass plate. So you've got a nice good earth contact there. That looks much better. And I'll just give the star washers a clean as well and then reassemble that. Took it outside for a bit of a chemical clean, just light rubbing. Didn't want to make it look fake, but just got rid of a lot of that crap that was on there. Looks much better now, looks loved. This is the first time I'm applying power uh, since the amp's been on the bench. And because uh, I've got new filter caps, I've got to be really careful about powering it up. So I'm just going to ramp it up slowly on the Variac. And I've got the voltage here, um, which is showing the voltage on the B plus here. Now we're not got anything on the Variac yet. I'm slowly winding it up because we've got a valve rectifier. I don't expect to see much action until we get, oh, here we go. I was going to say till we get to about 80 or 100 volts, but that's starting already. We're on 73 volts, AC coming in. All right, now I reckon we should start seeing, I'm on 100 volts now going in, and that rectifier is coming on now. Let's go to half mains at 120. Yep, okay, so rectifier's working. Nothing's going bang or pop, so that's another good sign. I'll just let this come up to a bit more voltage. Still got 120 on the incoming mains. Okay, I'm going to go up a bit further now. Let's go up to 150, I think. And we'll have another bit of a break here. Okay, 277 volts. 280 with 150 mains. Now I'm not gonna go up to 240 because I have no uh, tubes, either power tubes or preamp tubes. 
so all the voltage is going to be artificially high. And that will do me, I think. Let's sit 215 volts coming in. And here's our plate. 405. Our screen. 405. Identical. We've got no tube in there yet. Here's our grid bias voltage. Minus 40. So while I'm measuring the bias voltage, I'm going to make the bias more negative, which is the same as making it colder, because we're going to bias this using the oscilloscope. So I'm going to go as negative as the pot will let me. There it is, minus 45. Now let's check the other power tube. 407, 407. Minus 45. Let's just check. Now we've got no preamp tubes, so all I'm going to look is at a couple of the plate voltages 396, 407, that's our reverb driver. Um, I'm going to put a new set of uh, 6V6s as per the customer's request. But first, we shall discharge this baby. I've put the new tubes in. And I've gone with a matched pair of tube amp Dr. 6V6s, the red base ones, which I quite like. So I've got power on, standby on. This time I will go up to 240 because we've got a full load. I'm hearing some hiss through the workshop speaker. 240. 430 volts of B plus. So plate 430, screen 429, minus 50 on the control grid. Now I'll check some of the preamp tubes. This is a V1 plate, 200. Cathode, we should see 1.5 ish. Yeah. Got a couple of cameras going here. This one is going to be watching the plate voltage and the plate current, and the other one is going to be watching the oscilloscope. Now you remember I've set the bias intentionally cold, so we're going to see a fairly nasty crossover distortion, which nobody but Mesa Boogie likes. And there is our crossover distortion. It is that notch that you see there as it crosses over the zero point. That is crossover distortion. That means one tube has turned off before the other one has turned on. So now what we're going to do is warm up the bias. And you're going to see that both the gain increase, the height of the wave, and you're going to see the notch decrease. And what have I got? Volume 6. I am pretty happy with that. It is just starting to taper off top and bottom, as you can see. So I'll just bring it back a little bit from there. Now I'll unplug, and this is at volume 5.5. So if we can get maximum cleans at 5.5, I would be ecstatic. All right, what do we got? Look at that. Both tubes pulling 20 milliamps. That is, I've never seen a, a match of tubes that good. All right, usually a couple of milliamps, even, but this is a brand new set. That's pretty amazing. All right, so 406 volts times 20 milliamps, which is 0.02 milliamps. That's 8.12 watts in 14 watt tube. It's 58%. Bang, on the money. Now out of interest, I'm going to see what the voltage is on the grid. Negative 38, negative 35. How's that? Let's have a look at see what the voltage is on the plate. 405 volts, 415. 
I'm really happy with that. Now the owner will be interested in what its power output is. So we're going to slowly increase it. This is on the vibrato channel. Almost there. I will call that the maximum clean volume and that's 12.5 volts or 12.4 volts 12.4 volts squared divided by 8 19.2 watts clean let's see what we can get if we drive it a bit harder Well, that's that's on volume seven. Yeah, I don't know that I'd. I mean, you can. I can do that, and we'll have a, an incredible power rating. But that's not going to sound very deluxey. I reckon that's still going to sound. Yeah, I think that's going to sound quite deluxey. And that's uh, giving me thirteen volts RMS with a bit of grit in it. Thirteen squared. Divide that by 8, 21 watts. Spot on the money. Um, let's just check the normal channel. Now I had to replace a preamp tube. So on the normal channel, I put in a 5751, which I really like. Slightly lower gain. So I expect we're going to re reach our maximum value with a higher value on the knob. Um, so let's have a look and see. I'll set the tones exactly the same. I would say that's our maximum clean. 12.3, I think it's, it's going to be exactly the same. No point in calculating it. And I would say that's our maximum deluxe reverb volume. Okay, we're not there yet. We're getting there, but not there yet. We've still got to check to see that the tremolo works and the reverb works. I have my workshop reverb tank, which has lost its spring, so it's going to sound a bit doinky if it works. And um, I'm not sure about this tremolo because I can see that a previous tech had installed this cap here to stop it going tick, 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 tick. So we'll see if that's still a reliable repair or otherwise I'll just replace that whole thing. <coughs> Let's test the... What? No tremolo? But wait! It needs a pedal. Here's my little temporary pedal. Mm hmm, you can hear that. Okay, so the tremolo works. Take off the pedal. Now, does the reverb work? Yes, it does. Sounds a bit boinky. Let's just make sure this switch works, foot switch works. Foot switch works. All right, so mind you, this has not tested the owner's reverb tank or leads. These are my leads and my reverb tank. That was the reverb recovery connection, reverb return that made that loud bang. This is fine to put back in now. We got a bit of hiss. How can we reduce it? It's normal noise. We could replace more preamp tubes, but I don't want to. And preamp tube replacement is something that the owner can do, you can do, you don't need a tech to do that. The other possibility is plate resistors. Previous tech had already thought of that and replaced the carbon comp ones with metal film. I think we've got more solder joint issues here. I'm going to redo these solder joints around here.
I'd like to do a bit of a recap, as much for me as for you, as to what we did on this 1964 Deluxe Reverb. So first thing I did is rewire the mains. I've now soldered the earth connection directly to the chassis, looped it around so the longest lead in the chassis from the mains is the earth. So that's the last thing to get pulled off in case of a, a hard yanking. The mains now goes to the fuse first, then to the switch. From the switch it goes to the transformer. The neutral goes to the voltage selector, but I've permanently wired it to 240, so there's no accidental resetting it to any other voltage. Then the now unused ground switch has been reassigned to give it a, a subtle, and yet I think quite tasty effect where I just disconnect the negative feedback loop. And that's now using that switch instead of just leaving it inactive. These resistors, which quite often get replaced, I found were fine, so I left them in place. Tested for leakage, the final stage coupling caps, which can destroy our brand new tubes. You can just see the, the bottom of the red bases there. So they're the red base TAD uh, 6V6s. These grid leak capacitors, 220 ohm from the bias circuit, both fine, so I left those in place. I left that ticking mod cap here. Still operating well from previous tech, no need to change that. No need to change the, um, the roach, the optocoupler. It's also going fine. I had to replace the two power tubes, the two 6V6s. The original ones are just drifted too far apart to be usable. Um, likewise, in terms of preamp tubes, they were all okay, except for two of the preamp tubes. So the amp now operates nice and quietly. I grounded that brass earth strip. Now I've got a, a good solid earth for all of those pots on the front. Because if that's not solidly earth, then we don't know the quality of the connection of the grounds when we're just talking about the pressure of the washers and the nuts securing it. Replace these 200K resistors that were microphonic, noisy, with two 100K vishes which I like because they're brown like the originals. Cleaned all the pots, cleaned the input jacks on both channels, cleaned the bias pot, biased the new power tubes using the oscilloscope method, which was then double checked with uh, plate current. Replaced the cathode bypass capacitors with new TAD uh, 25 by 25 capacitors. The fuse I changed. This uh, in the USA is a one amp slow blow fuse. Sadly, someone who replaced it at some stage think that if you double the voltage, you've got to double the current. Uh, so there was a two amp slow blow fuse in here, which is basically offering the amp no protection whatsoever. I replaced it with the correct 0.5 of an amp, or I think I might have used 0.63. Did I put that? Yeah, 0.63 I used. Gave it a bit of a clean overall. Oh yeah, there was a bit of warpage in the eyelet board. I have improved it significantly. I don't know if you can even tell from there, but that's noticeably better than it was. Bugger. I was just getting ready to do the final sound sample for you. Plug the guitar in and heard this. I'm not sure, probably it's gonna clip my mic, but. That's the sound of coil rub in the speaker. Just got back from the phone call with the owner of the Deluxe and he said, well, what's the best speaker that we can get, Chris? And this guy's got a great ear, I've got to tell you. And I said, well, the best speakers are... So, let's do it. So I'll be back probably in a month. <laughs>